Have you ever pondered why certain life events seem to repeatedly occur within your family? We all have those family stories, patterns that seem to echo through the generations, the prodigal son, the black sheep, the golden child. It's almost as if there's a script that keeps getting reenacted with different actors, but the same roles. Is it mere coincidence or is there something more to it? Perhaps even a divine hand at play? Today, we delve into exploring this intriguing subject. Patterns, they exist everywhere, even in our own families. Like threads woven into the fabric of our lives, they form the intricate tapestry of our existence. From the way we laugh to how we handle stress, our family patterns are deeply embedded in our psyche, shaping our actions and reactions, often without us even realizing it. Now let's delve deeper into this fascinating concept. Picture your family tree, a complex network of interconnected lives spanning generations. Within this structure, you may observe recurring themes or patterns. Perhaps it's a streak of artistic talent, a propensity for adventure, or even a shared love for cheesy jokes. However, these patterns aren't always positive. Some families may find themselves entrapped in cycles of dysfunction or negativity. These may manifest as recurring health issues, financial struggles, or even patterns of conflict and estrangement. It's as if there's an unseen hand a puppeteer, if you will, pulling the strings of fate, orchestrating these repeating sequences. But here's the thing. These patterns are not random. They are deeply intertwined with our family history, our shared experiences and our collective consciousness. They are the echoes of our ancestors resonating through time, leaving their indelible marks on our lives. It's tempting to dismiss these patterns as mere coincidences or chalk them up to genetic predisposition. However, a more thoughtful examination reveals a deeper, more profound truth. These patterns reflect the interconnectedness of our lives, the ripple effect of actions and decisions, and the profound influence of our environment. This understanding can be both enlightening and daunting. It challenges us to look beyond the surface, to question our assumptions, and to confront the unseen forces shaping our lives. It nudges us to acknowledge our past, understand our present, and take responsibility for our future. But what if these patterns are not just coincidences? What if they are signs, messages, or lessons from a higher power? Could it be that God, or the universe, or whatever higher power you believe in, is using these patterns to communicate with us, to guide us, or perhaps to challenge us? It's a thought-provoking concept, isn't it? But before we delve into that, let's take a moment to ponder on this. Some believe that these familial patterns have a divine connection. It's a perspective that can be seen in various cultures and spiritual beliefs across the globe. The notion of divine intervention in human affairs isn't new. It dates back to ancient civilizations where gods were believed to directly influence everything from the weather to the fate of individuals. Let's take a closer look at this concept. The phrase, God deciding to finish a person in the family might sound rather ominous. But it's not necessarily about doom or gloom, it's about the idea that the universe, or the divine, is orchestrating events for reasons beyond our immediate understanding. In many spiritual beliefs, it's thought that our souls choose the lessons they need to learn in this life before we are even born. These lessons could come in the form of challenges, hardships, or even the ending of a life. It's a concept that lends to the belief in karma, reincarnation, and the soul's journey through multiple lifetimes. In some cultures, they consider these patterns as a form of divine intervention, a way for the universe to guide us back on the right path or to help us grow spiritually. It's not about punishment, but rather it's about spiritual evolution. The idea of God deciding to finish a person might then be interpreted as the end of a particular cycle or lesson that the soul needed to learn. It could be seen as the completion of a chapter making way for a new one to begin. It's about endings and beginnings, death and rebirth, the closing of one door and the opening of another. But, of course, these are just interpretations and they can vary greatly depending on one's personal beliefs, cultural background and spiritual understanding. It's a topic that invites deep thought and introspection, a journey into the realm of the metaphysical. But what does it mean when we say God has decided to finish this person? Let's delve deeper into this in the following segment. In essence, it's not as ominous as it sounds. When we say God has decided to finish this person in your family, it might seem like a grave statement, something out of a dramatic play or a high-stakes thriller. But in reality, it's a profound concept that's deeply rooted in spirituality and personal growth. The phrase is often interpreted as a person being chosen to break a negative cycle or pattern within the family. Think of it as a relay race. 
The baton has been passed down generation after generation, each runner carrying forward the same habits, traditions and, unfortunately, the same mistakes. But then one runner, one person, decides to stop. They decide to break away from the track that's been laid out for them to forge a new path. That person is the one we're talking about here. Imagine a family where anger is a common response, where raised voices and harsh words are the norm. Then one member decides to respond differently. They choose calmness over anger, understanding over confrontation. They are the ones breaking the cycle, creating a new pattern for future generations to follow. Or consider a family struggling with addiction. It's a cycle that's hard to break, a path that's difficult to deviate from. But then one person decides to seek help, to fight the addiction, to create a healthier life for themselves and their loved ones. They are the ones finished in the sense that they are breaking the pattern, the negative cycle. In this context, finished is not a terminal point, it's not an end, but a transformation. It's about shedding old layers, letting go of past burdens and embracing change. It's about becoming a catalyst for positive change, not just for oneself, but for the entire family. So when we say God has decided to finish this person in your family, it's not a death sentence. It's a call to change, a call to break the cycle, a call to transform. It's about transformation and change, not an end. So, what does it take to break these cycles, you might ask? Well, it's a journey of self-discovery, transformation and growth. It begins with recognizing and acknowledging the patterns that have been passed down through generations. First, we need to identify the cycle. This might be a pattern of behavior, a repeated situation, or even a recurring feeling. It's like finding a thread in a tapestry, and once you've found it, you can start to trace it back to its source. Once we've identified the cycle, the next step is understanding. We must seek to comprehend why this pattern exists. What are the underlying fears, beliefs, or wounds that fuel it? This part of the journey can be challenging, as it often requires us to confront uncomfortable truths. Then comes the healing. Healing is about acknowledging these truths, feeling the feelings that come with them, and then letting them go. It's about releasing the hold these patterns have on us, and it's a process that takes time, patience, and often a great deal of courage. Next, we need to cultivate self-awareness. This is about being present and mindful in our lives, observing our thoughts, feelings, and actions without judgment. With self-awareness, we can catch ourselves when we start to fall into old patterns and choose a different path. Finally, we must commit to personal growth. This means actively seeking to learn and evolve to be better than we were yesterday. It's about setting goals, making plans, and taking steps towards a brighter, healthier future. In essence, breaking these cycles is about reclaiming our power. It's about realizing that we are not bound by the past, that we have the ability to shape our own lives. It's about choosing to break free from the chains of our family's history and stepping into the light of our own potential. Remember, you are not your family's history. You have the power to create your own. In the end, it's about understanding that we have the power to shape our own destiny. This is the truth we must embrace. We've delved into a provocative question, unraveled an abstract concept, and found our way to a divine connection. We've sought meaning and discovered how to break cycles that no longer serve us. We've learned that being finished by a divine entity doesn't mean an end, but a transformation. It's a call to grow, to evolve, to shed the old and embrace the new. It's about recognizing the divine within us all and the power it holds over our lives. Now let's stir up a discussion. First, how do you interpret the idea of being finished? Is it a fearful concept or one that inspires growth? Second, how can we better embrace change and transformation in our lives, especially when it feels like we're being finished? Your insights, your experiences, your wisdom, they're all part of this ongoing conversation. So let's keep the dialogue moving, share your thoughts, your answers to these questions, and let's deepen our understanding together. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave your feedback. We appreciate your support and look forward to hearing your thoughts. This is how we grow, how we evolve, how we continue this journey together. So until next time, remember, you have the power to shape your own destiny.